Hello everybody, uh, my name is Mars Marshall. I am the producer of Eve of October. And, uh, well, I've never really done a tutorial, so I thought I'd just do a quick little thing to kind of show people kind of what I do for my characters. Um, basically, it's like a three-step process. I usually start out by drawing and inking the character on paper. Uh, the reason I choose it to do it that way is I don't really like going into Anime Studio and plotting lines and that sort of thing. It feels more second nature when I'm drawing it. So basically, uh, I start out, draw it, ink it, and then I scan it into uh, Photoshop, usually at 400 DPI plus, uh, because if you zoom in on the character, you're going to run into problems with resolution if you don't scan at a high ratio. And um, <clears throat> basically after that, I bring it into Photoshop and I color it. And uh, the next step, I would uh, segment the character, arms, legs, head, eyes, mouth, whatever. And uh, then I'd bring it into Anime Studio, all the different pieces and parts. And each one saved as a PNG file. And then I rig them up on the uh, skeleton and prep them up for animation. And that's pretty much what I do. Uh, so give me a moment here. I'll show you step by step kind of what I do. Okay, so like I said before, I start out with uh, my sketch. Usually fairly rough. I, you know, get it a little bit tighter and work things out. Get the best I can. Doesn't have to be totally perfect, but at least in the general ballpark. And uh, once I'm pretty happy with it, then I move on to the next stage. Okay, the next step may seem a little bit odd, but... Uh, You'll kind of see when we move into step three uh, why I do it this way. Basically, in the old days when I used to work in comics, uh, you would draw your image with a blue pencil and then you would ink over the top of that. Um, don't really need to use those archaic methods anymore. Uh, with, with a computer, Photoshop, I just scan my pencils in and then I shift everything into the blue using the hue adjuster and basically you come up with the second image. Now the third step, basically what happens is once I have my blue image, I'll go ahead and print that out on like a nice card stock. Uh, it works really good when you're doing inking. Once, that, once I print that out, I sit there and basically start inking it by hand Usually I use Sharpie markers and stuff like that, but you you know, you can use regular ink or a brushed ink or something like that. But a lot of those brushed ink effects you can get in Photoshop if you know how to use the filters. Uh, once I ink it, I basically scan it again and uh, bring it up. Okay, for the, the next few steps, you're really going to have to be familiar with Photoshop. And so what I recommend is getting on the internet, doing a search, and learning how to use the, the layering tools. And if you're familiar with that, then the next few steps you'll completely understand. The next uh, image that we have here is basically what I call the matte layer. This is uh, the layer that you're going to use to actually change the colors of your character, the accessories, or whatever. You know, in the past, when I used to uh, color my images, I would treat it pretty much like a two-dimensional image. And I would paint 
like I said, just a single image. I do the face flesh tone, hands flesh tone. I paint the uh, clothing and the hair whatever color they should be. And uh, I realized that with Photoshop, I really don't need to go to that extent. It actually takes a lot longer to color a character out like that. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and detail it out as a gray image, focus on the highlights, the shadow, the shading, everything, get to look as round and smooth and as dimensional as I possibly can, just totally focus on the form. N don't even worry about the color. And once you have a good solid gray image that's all looks the way you want it, then you go ahead and copy that into several different layers. Now each of those layers they can be changed using the hue tool in Adobe Photoshop. You can use the hue and color uh, tools to change the gray images to whatever color that you prefer. You know, alterating the saturation, the hue, the brightness, and all that good stuff. One thing I, I missed though, uh, I was talking about the highlight layer. If you look at the third image, you'll see that there's this white highlight that goes around the ink. Uh, basically that's a tool that I use in Photoshop. I believe it's called Highlight Edge. And uh, Highlight Edge is really cool. It adds uh, a sense of dimension to the character. It's a technique that I use often. Probably a bit of overkill, but it just looks really good. I, I love uh, using that effect on my characters. It makes them look, look a little more rounded, more dimensional. So when you have uh, the image looking the way you do, then you go ahead and break it down into three, four, five, six different layers, different colors. Uh, you notice the first image is red for her hair, her eyes. The second, her uh, pink for her clothing. Uh, the third image is more of a flesh tone. So what you end up having is a layer with different colors for every color aspect of your character. And like I said earlier on, you're going to have the ink layer over the top of all those layers. The next step, obviously, is like for the red layer. You're going to want just to show the hair, so you're going to cut out anything that has nothing to do with the hair. You're going to get rid of the face, the ears, the clothing, everything else, and you'll end up with just the red hair. For the clothing, you're going to get rid of everything that's not pink. Get rid of the, the head, the hair, the ears, whatever. And last but not least, your flesh tone. You're going to get rid of everything that has nothing to do with the flesh. So basically you're going to have one layer that has her hair on it, one layer that has anything that's clothing, another layer that's basically the flesh tones and that sort of thing.
now of course if it all looks flat doesn't look appealing you can always go in pretty much like I did on this image you don't see flat uh, matte layers you see uh, highlighted edges you know the pink boots and everything's got a nice airbrushed white highlight on it uh, under the breast lots of shadow just anything to make the character pop out well once I have an image complete I'll usually go over it a few times till till the thing you know looks the best I can possibly get it the more time that you spend on it the, the overall you know the image is going to be even more impressive last but not least uh, segment the character now, this took me quite a while to to kind of perfect but basically you just start cutting the image into all you know doll parts basically spread it around on the canvas move it around cut out all the things that you think that you're gonna move then you have to with a, a bit of cleverness you have to try to figure out the best way to hide the seams and the edges and the joints the way they bend and rotate the method that I use quite a bit is I, I basically use round parts if you look at the top of the legs nice and round the ankles the knees nice and round everything uh, bends and turns and spins a lot better when it's basically formed on a circle and that's what I found works the best and with a bit of practice you'll build to crank out a nice segmented character once you're done with the uh, segmentation basically I just go and cut all the different parts the hands the torso the feet whatever else you have boots and I'll cut the images out and save them independently as a, PI, a PNG file and uh, if I remember correctly Anim Studio somewhere in their tutorials they show you how to, to uh, do a PNG file and uh, per, that's where I learned so you might want to take a look at the Anim Studio uh, tutorials that give you a good idea a good starting point to uh, figure out how to use the PNG files if you look here I got all the mouths all the different segments for that character all saved into a character file I got the eyes uh, you know any, anything that needs to move I basically have cut and separated out and uh, that basically does it for this tutorial uh, I'm sorry that I kind of blasted through a lot of things this tutorial is more of a generalization for people that already have experience with Photoshop that have been using Anime Studio and that sort of thing and uh, to cover all those things that I discussed would take much more time than I have in the tutorial and uh, so I hope you found it useful uh, if you found it useful uh, give me a like uh, subscribe to my channel the more subscribers I get the more likely I'm going to do more tutorials and uh, oh yeah by the way take time to uh, check out my films uh, Eve of October uh, you can get those on Amazon the first video is out and uh, Here's some examples of uh, the character after it's been rigged up. Uh, enjoy. Maybe this could have been prevented. Maybe this could have been prevented. Maybe this could have been prevented.